All aboard, Club Crawl Special. All aboard, all aboard. <laughs> Again, we board the club car special and sink into a comfortable chair and open our newspaper to the March of Events and City Life section, a section written by America's front-rank humorist and which appears in all her Sunday newspapers throughout the country. Here you will chuckle with such masters of mirth as Will Rogers, Sam Hellman, Arthur Bugs, Bear, O.O. O. McIntyre, Milt Gross. And as an added feature, you will find smart, sophisticated cartoons drawn by the cream of America's humorous artists. What a section. Let's go. Now, just for a starter, here's a cartoon showing a scene in the big city police station. The sergeant is behind the desk, and a patrolman has just entered breathlessly. Hey, Sarge, you know that new traffic cop we got? Yeah, what's he done now? Well, he just made a big pinch. Sixteen guys. Well, it's about time he did something. What did he pick them up for? I don't know yet. He's unloading them from the wagon now. Wait, here he comes now. Hey, come on, you fellas, come on now. Stand up in front of the sergeant there. Hello, sergeant, I brought you some prisoners. Say, what is this? What did you arrest these men for? Well, they was breaking the law. Why, they you must be crazy. These men are firemen. Yeah, I, I know, but they was riding on a great big truck. Yeah, and what of it? Well, y you see, sergeant... They was parking right in front of a fire plug. <laughs> <laughs> all aboard, Club Call Special. Next stop, Arthur Bug Bear. All aboard. <laughs> Not all the excitement in the Hearst Sunday newspapers is on the front page these days. Readers are turning with feverish interest to the March of Events and City Life section to find out about the match between What a Man and Bopper Dell. What a Man is the heavyweight champ of Rough Town, a tough little community created by Arthur Bugs Bear. Water can't make up his mind whether to fight Bopper Dell or not. Maybe he'll come to some decision today, but we'll find him talking to Mayor Ruff. <laughs> Did you hear what the boys are saying down at the gas house, Warner? No, what are they saying? They think you're yellow for not fighting Papa Dell. Ah, uh, I ain't got time to fight that mug. I'm busy. Well, he ain't no setup, and you better take him out pretty soon, or the gang will be giving you the Bronx cheer. Ah, uh, I tell you, I ain't got no time to fight. I'm busy. I'm working. I got a job. Yeah, what are you doing? I signed up with that new lunchroom across the street. Are you washing fishes? No, they're using me as a lookout and a dumbwaiter chef. Oh, How's the grub over there? I hear they give you all you can eat for 15 cents. You got it wrong. They don't give you all you can eat. They give you all you can stand. Yeah? Hey, where are you going now? I'm going over to the drugstore for a sandwich. This is me lunch hour. Hmm, that's funny. Working in a lunchroom and going out for lunch? Won't they give you a sandwich in the house? Uh, they tried to, and I had to suck them. What's the matter? Ain't their stuff no good? It's terrible. They get their butter out of the grease boxes down at the freight yard. Yeah? And when the trains go by, they save the cinders to pepper the eggs. Huh? Hey. What? I was just thinking. I changed me mind about Papa Dell. You mean that you're going to fight him? Sure, any time. What made you change your mind? I just seen him coming out of that lunchroom where I work at. Well, what difference does that make? Any guy that eats there is out on his feet already. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard, club car special. Next stop, O.O. McIntyre. All aboard. <laughs> Oh, 
O.O. McIntyre is the dean of Broadway columnists. His gleanings along the Great White Way have made this famous thoroughfare as well known to the natives of Arkansas as it is to the New Yorker. McIntyre's articles are an exclusive feature of all Hearst Sunday newspapers everywhere. Here is a typical sidelight on the life of a celebrity as seen by this popular columnist. He tells of a very prominent lecturer who was invited to talk before a local women's organization. We'll let you hear what took place just as the lecturer stepped on the platform and was greeted by the president of the organization. Oh, I think it was simply ducky of you to come. Oh, what is it you're going to lecture on? I think it was Alaska you wanted me to talk about, wasn't it? Oh, yes, yes. How stupid of me to forget. I hope you're going to tell us all about those cute little pygmies they have up there. Pygmies? I never saw any pygmies in Alaska. Oh, but you must have. You know, those cute little ducks that walk like Charlie Chaplin. You're thinking of penguins, aren't you? Well, maybe that's what they are. Anyhow, penguins are pygmies. I think they're terribly cute. Oh, dear. Oh, uh, look, my dear. You've forgotten your watch chain. My watch chain? I don't own one. I carry a wristwatch. Well, I don't see how you're ever going to lecture without a watch chain. Uh, what, will you uh, uh, twirl while you're talking? Oh, I think I can manage. Well, just as you say, my man. Oh, one thing I meant to ask you. Do you walk up and down very much? I mean, when you lecture. Why, I may move around just a bit. Well, uh, would you mind walking on the left side of the platform? Uh, you see, the right is getting a little worn. Well, I'll remember that. And now, then, my man, I think everything is ready. If it isn't too much trouble, would you ask someone to bring me a pitcher of ice water? Ice water? Ice water. Uh, did you want it for drinking? No, no, dear lady. I use it when I go into my high diving act. <laughs> All aboard, Club Call Special. Next stop, Will Rogers. All aboard. In the Hearst Sunday papers the other day, Will Rogers took up the subject of government control of gold. Will, as usual, had a lot to say that was right to the point. We're going to dramatize for you one of the amusing sidelights he brought out. We begin with a scene in a general store out in the West. The proprietor is behind the counter and an old prospector is just coming in the door. Well, Lim, what can I do for you? Well, I'll uh, take a couple of sacks of flour, Dave. Here you are, Lim. Thank what you. What else can I get you? Well, it might give me a side of that dried beef there and some salt and pepper. Must be going on a trip, ain't you, Lim? Well, just going to mosey around a bit. Uh, how are them pickaxes you got over there? Ain't had no complaints. Best pickaxes you can get. Well, give me one, and I'll take a spade, too. What are you up to, Lim? Sounds like the old days when you was prospecting for gold. Well, I sort of took a notion to try my hand at it again. Yeah, what do you expect to find, Lim? There ain't no gold in them there hills now. Well, I ain't going up in them there hills. Yeah, where are you going? Well, it's like this. All the gold that used to be in them there hills was dug up years ago. That's right. And that gold was turned into money and put in the bank. That's where it went. Then not so long ago, folks has got scared and took their gold out of the bank and buried it in the backyard. That's what they did. Then along come Mr. Roosevelt and says all the gold belongs to government. And that just about turns that gold that everyone was hoarding into counterfeit. Yeah, maybe you're right, Lim. Yes, sir, and the folks that buried that gold are plumb scared to dig it up. Have you got some buried, Lim? No, sir, but uh, I know where there are a lot of backyards. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard, Club Call Special. Next stop, Milk Grove. All aboard. <laughs> Millions of readers of the Hearst Sunday newspapers are faithful followers of Joe Runt, a character created by the fertile brain of Milt Gross. Joe Runt is a likable little guy who thinks the sun rises and sets in his boss, Mr. Thorndike. 
Today we find Joe at his favorite haunt, the neighborhood pool room. He's talking to some of the boys. Hiya, fellas. Hello, boys. How's it going? Say, uh, I was just wondering if any of you boys know where I can get a nice, fresh chicken. Now, what's the matter with Oscar's butcher shop right down at the corner? Well, I was thinking of that, only I got to be sure this chicken is awful fresh. What's the big idea? What you so particular about? Well, you see, my boss, it's for him. I heard him say he'd like to have some nice fried chicken like he got down south. And I want to make him a present of one. I get it, I get it. Hey, here comes Papo, the proprietor. Maybe he can give you a steer. Hello, Papo. Hi. Oh, hello, Joe. What's on your mind, eh? Well, there's not much, only I was just asking Sam here where I could get a very, very fresh chicken. Oh, so you want the fresh chicken, eh? <laughs> well, I can fix you up a fine. I got a chicken, and she's so fresh, she's still walking around. Well, that's great, Papo. Say, uh... Would you, would you sell it to me as a very, very special favor? Well, I'm going to do better for that. I'm going to raffle this chicken for you. Are you running a raffle, Papa? Oh, shoo sure, shoo sure. I got it the chances all printed and everything. Gee, that's swell. How much are those chances? Well, the ten cents a chance. How many you want? Well, now, let me see. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take about a dollar's worth. <laughs> you sure is smart for low, Joe. You want to be sure to win, eh? Yeah, you say, Papo, it's it's for my boss. Here's the dollar. Oh, gracias. <laughs> Here's the chance. There's ten of them. Well, now, wait a minute. May, maybe you better give me another dollar's worth. Oh, sure thing. <laughs> That's all right. That's a six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Here's the ten more chances. That ain't all the chances you got, is it, Papo? Well, I sell quite a few already. <laughs> I only got the nine more left. Well, nine more left, huh? Well, uh, Papo, I guess I better take them, too. You see, I don't want anybody else in the whole world but me to win this here chicken. Well, Joe, you certainly won a smart of <laughs> Well, here's the chances. And, and if you wait the right to here, I'm going to be back in a one minute. Sir. Oh, I'll wait all right, all right, Papo. But say, listen, please hurry, oh, will you? Oh, I'll hurry, Joe. Don't worry, I'll hurry. <laughs> Uh, gee, you sure do want that chicken, Joe. Yeah, you bet I do. You know, I can hardly wait till Papo gets back here with it. What do you mean, gets back with it? He didn't go for no chicken. He only went out to get some more chances printed. At this point, may we say that you can make this program as long as you wish by turning to the March of Events and City Life section of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. There you will find long articles that have been written by these same writers, Will Rogers, O.O. McIntyre, Bugs Bear, Milt Gross, Sam Hellman, and others. This program has given you only brief excerpts of their uproarious comedy, for there's column after column of wit and merriment awaiting you. No other newspaper presents such an assembly of so many noted comedy writers of the day. In the March of Events and City Life section of the Hearst Sunday newspapers, you will find sparkling cartoons also. The Club Car Special Broadcast has been scheduled to visit your home next week at this same time over this same radio station. Be sure to listen in for another 15 minutes of delightful merriment.